how does memory emerge? How does, which is, the st how does this, the temporal stickiness so, of objects emerge? Um, I, 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 I'm gonna take a very chemocentric point of view because I can't imagine any other way of doing it. You, you could think of other ways maybe, uh, um, um, but I would say heterogeneity in matter is where the memory, so you must have enough different ways of rearranging matter for there to be a memory. So what that means is if you've got particles colliding in a box, let's just take a, um, a, some, in all, some elements in a box, those elements can combine in a combinatorial set of ways. So there's a combinatorial explosion of the t number of molecules or minerals or solid objects, bonds being made. Because there's such a large number of the population of different objects that are possible. This goes back to assembly theory, where assembly theory, there's four types of universes, right? So you've got basically, a, um, and this is what one was up earlier, where one universe where you've just got everything is possible, so you can take all the atoms and combine them and make everything. Then you've got basically what is the assembly combinatorial, where you basically have to accrue information in steps. Then you've got um, assembly observed, Right, and then you've got the object assembly going back. Mm -hmm. So what that means, what I'm trying to say is, like, if you can take atoms and make bonds, let's say you take a nitrogen atom and add it to a carbon atom, you find an amino acid, then you add another carbon atom on in a particular configuration, then another one, all the different molecules, they all represent different histories. Um, so I would say, for me right now, the most simple route into life seems to be through recording memories and chemistry. But that doesn't mean there can't be other ways. And can't be other emergent effects, but I, I think if you can make bonds and lots of different bonds, and they those molecules can have a causal effect on the future. So imagine a box of atoms, and then then you combine those atoms in some way. So you make molecule A from a load of atoms, and then molecule A can go back to the box and influence the box. Then you make. A prime or A B or A B C, and that process keeps going, and that's where the memories come from. Is that heterogeneity in the universe from bonding? I don't know if that makes any sense. In its beginning to flourish at the chemistry level. Yeah. So the physicists have no, no, no like not enough. Yeah. The phys phys I mean, it's, they're it, like it, desperately begging. Well, the for physicists would claim freedom. Yeah. Uh, and heterogeneous components to play with. Yeah, that's exactly it. What do you think about that, Sarah? I mentioned already, I think it's significant that whatever physics governs life emerges actually in chemistry. It's not relevant at the uh, subatomic scale or even at the atomic scale. It's in, well, atomic scale because chemistry. But like when you get into this this combinatorial diversity that you get from combining things on the periodic table, that's when selection actually matters or the fact that some things can exist and others can't exist actually starts to matter. Um, so I think of it like um, you don't you don't study gravity inside the atomic nucleus. You study it in terms of large scale structure of the universe or black holes or things like that. And whatever we're talking about as physics of information or physics of assembly becomes relevant at a certain scale of reality. And um, and the transition that you're talking about, I would think of as just when you get a sufficient density in terms of the assembly space of like the relationship of the overlap and and the assembly space, which is like a feature of common memory, there is this transition um, to assembly dominated physics, whatever that is. Oh, like yeah, when we're talking yeah, yeah. about, and we're we're trying to map out exactly what that transition looks like. We're pretty sure, you know, of some of its features, but we haven't done all of the. Do you think if you were there in the early universe, you would have been able to predict the emergence of chemistry and biology? And I ask that because at this stage, as humans, do you think we can possibly predict the length of memory that's that might be able to be formed later on in this pocket of the universe? Like how how complex is uh what is the ceiling of assembly? I think as much time as you have in the past is how much you can predict in the future because that it's actually physical in the system, and you have to have enough time for uh. But, features of that structure to exist. Wait, let me push back on that. Wait, uh, what, what isn't that? Isn't there somewhere in the universe that's like a shortest path that's been that stretches all the way to the beginning? Yeah, that's building some giant monster. Right. Maybe, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so you the can't universe has as much it. memory as the largest assembly object in the universe. Yeah. Right. But like, so you can't predict. You can't predict any deeper than that. No. Right. So like that. I guess that's all I'm saying is, like, what intuition do you have about complexity living in the world that you have today? Right. Because you you just you can. I mean, I guess how long. Um, well, you does it get have more fun? It. Like, isn't there going to be at some point because there's a there's a heat death in the universe? Isn't there going to be a point of the most uh, of the highest assembly of object at the, the, with the highest right. probability being generated? All the time? When is the universe going to be the most fun, and can we freeze fun. ourselves and then live then? Exactly. <laughs> and will you know when you're having the most fun that this is the best time you're in your prime? Or are you going I, to do what everyone does, which is deny that you're in your prime and the best years are still ahead of you? <laughs> I don't know. What option do you have? Um, uh, I I don't. I mean, the problem is with there's a lots of lots of really interesting features here. I just want to mention one thing that might be is that I do think assembly theory applies all the way back to subatomic particles, and I also think that cosmological selection might have been actually there. There might have been. A, it's not, I would say it's a really boring bit, but it's really important if you're a cosmologist that that universes have gone through. Was it Lee Smolin who proposed this? Maybe that there is this. That basically, the universe evolves. You've got the wrong constants. We'll start again. <laughs> And the most productive constants where you can allow oh, yeah, particles to form in a certain way, get propagate to the next universe and we go again. So actually selection goes all the way back and there's these cycling of universes. And now this universe has been selected because um, life can occur and it ca carries on.